We are moving to the third item in our chapter. We will talk about the Moore Law and the memory war problem. But before diving into the Moore Law, I will talk about the fabrications of computer hardware focused on the chip production. The slide shows a listing of computers in the second generation. Looking closely at the transitions between 1958 to 1960, the CPU technologies moved from vacuum tube to the transistor. Vacuum tubes and the transistors are the tran electronic device that made up the computers at that time. Now let's take a look at the illustrations of the electronic tubes and the transistor. You can compare the size of those electronic device so that you can deduct the results about the size of the computer today. On the left is the vacuum tube and the size of the teeth in comparisons with other components on the board. In this case, is the transformers. You can see that the size of the teeth is comparable to the transformer, which is very large. On the right is the tiny transistor in comparison to the electronal tube and the illustrations of the practical size of the transistor mounting on the surface of the board in this figure. The size of the circuits is hence fantastically diminished. The transitions from the calcium tube to the transistor can be considered as the revolutions in the computer productions that the size of the computers was considerably reduced. Now let's take a look at the processor fabrications process. The slide you that you are watching is illustrated. The CPU are the chips in general speaking fabrication process. The fabrications start with silicon ingot, which has been developed previously through a growing silicon ingot process. The ingot is a slide with a slicer to generate blank wafers. The blank wafers are processed carefully and meticulously to produce qualified wafers ready for making the chip. After wafer testing, the dyes are cut out from the wafer through wafer dicing process. And after being tested, they are bound to the base, then wiring to make up the chip's packet. For more information about the fabrication process, you can also refer to the links on the AMS to watch the illustrations videos about this process. This is the links that you can refer to. On the links, I gave you two videos. One is about the fabrications of integrated circuit and the other is about how a microchip is made. When you look, click at this or click at read more, you can see the two videos. They are qualified videos that I collect from the YouTube and you can find many of other videos if you have time. And if you are interested in this fabrications process. Now let's move to the next line. The growth of transistor count. By observing the transistor count on a chip through years of productions, we found that the amount of transistor on the chips linearly grows over time as shown on the chart, even with variations of chip making technologies. From transistor individually in the past to the integrated circuits or IC, and even with the most advanced fabrications process nowadays. The observation is named after Gordon Moore, the co-founder of Fairchild Semiconductors and former CEO and co-founder of Intel, who in 1965 posts a doubling every year in the numbers of components per integrated circuit and project this great growth will continue for the last, for at least another decade. More predictions has been used in the semiconductor industry to guide long-term plannings and to set targets for research and developments. Advancements in digital electronics, such as the reductions in quality adjust, microprocessor price, the increase in memory, 
capacity like RAM and flash memories, the improvements of sensors, and even the numbers of size of pixels in digital cameras are strongly linked to the Moore law. To the surprise of many, including Moore, the pace continued years after years and decades after decade. The pace slowed to a doubling 18 months in the 1970s, but has sustained that rate ever since. As a consequence of the Moore law, you can see that because the number of transistors produced on the chips double every two years. So the processing speed will be doubled after every two years. And consequently, the energy is consumed by the operations of the processors also double after two years. And in the same way, the size of the memories or the memory capacities also doubles after every two years. The more laws also cause numerous sequence. First, the cost of the chips has remained virtually unchanged with the graphic rows in densities. As the logics and memory elements are placed closer together on the more densely packed chips, the electrical part length between logic circuits on the chips is shortens and hence increasing operating speed of the of the chips. More than that, because the number of transistors double after every year of the size of the circuit or the size of the I integrate circuits also fantastically reduce and it becomes smaller, making it more convenient to place in a variety of environments. You can see nowadays the mobile phones is very thin, very small, or the size of the TV is also very thin, just like the pictures on, on the wall. Right? And the last consequence is that because the size of the chips is small, the transistors are densely packed inside the chips, the interconnections on the integrated circuit is reduced. Right? And the reliability of the chips is also increased. With more circuitries on each chips, there are fewer interchips interconnections. Now, about the memory wall. According to the Moore law, you can see that the number of instructions that the CPU can process per second is doubles after every two years. Right? The memory capacities produced also doubles after every two years. But the processing speed between the CPU and the memories outside the CPU chip is not the same. And the growing disparities of the speed between the CPU and the memory outside the CPU chip is what we call as the memory wall. An important reason for this disparity is the limit communications bandwidth beyond the chip's boundaries which is also referred to as bandwidth wall.